in order to evaluate the effectiveness of the Minamata Convention, it is crucial that analytical results are both valid and free from bias. To ensure this, NIMD collaborated with the UNEP Lab to conduct proficiency testing of the mercury analysis. Two of the most widely used methods in this proficiency testing are thermal decomposition atomic absorption spectrometry and cold vapor atomic absorption spectrometry. These methods are particularly effective for analyzing total mercury levels in human biomonitoring samples. TDAAS, also known as direct mercury analysis, is a quick and easy method that requires minimal reagents and sample preparation. It is particularly well suited for solid samples and is even recognized by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency as a reliable method for determining total mercury levels in solids and solutions. The TDAAS process involves heating the samples above 800 degrees Celsius to decompose methyl mercury or oxidize mercury into a gaseous form. Elemental mercury is then temporarily collected as gold amalgam and condensed in a mercury collection tube. The collection tube is then heated to release the mercury, which is then atomized and transferred into an absorption cell for measurement. Despite the simplicity of the TDAAS process, it is important to conduct quality assurance and quality control activities, such as background checks, instrumental sensitivity checks, multiple analyses, certified reference material analysis, and proficiency testing to ensure accurate results. To ensure the results are accurate, conducting quality assurance and quality control activities is essential. One crucial step is proper handling of the sample boats. Accordingly, we can heat combustion boats in an electric furnace and store them in a sealed container. To prevent contamination from the analytical instrument, it is also important to measure without a sample boat in the system. If the background level is too high, we can clean the inside by analyzing a small quantity of water. Repeat this step until we obtain two consecutive absorbance values at an acceptable background level. For example, a peak height of 0.0002 or less. Next. Analyze three empty boats to ensure that the absorbance is sufficiently low. If it is not, you should clean the boats. It is good practice to follow the manufacturer's instructions to establish an accessible system background. It is crucial to use a certified mercury standard solution. A commercially available one milligram per milliliter standard solution for atomic absorption is a great choice. It is made from high purity mercury dichloride. We will need to dilute the solution before use because it has a high mercury concentration. Be aware that low-level mercury in aqueous solutions can be unstable during storage, which could result in variations in the calibration curve or low reproducibility of measurements. To prevent this, add L-cysteine to the dilution water of the mercury standard solution. To ensure consistency, we can prepare working standard solutions at four concentrations by using nitric acid and L-cysteine. These solutions last for one year when stored in glass flasks in a refrigerator. However, it is a good idea to check their stability under laboratory conditions. Ensure that calibration is accurate before measuring the samples. Accordingly, we should ensure that calibration spans a useful measurement range. Generally, we need at least three calibration points for each absorption cell covering a range of 0 to 10 nanograms and 10 to 30 nanograms. The total mercury concentration in hair from a non-exposed population is typically between 0.1 and 0.7 nanograms per milligram. If someone consumes a lot of fish, their concentration can be higher, circa 1 to 3 nanograms per milligram. With these ranges in mind, we should create a calibration curve that reflects the data. Check that the calibration curve is not linear or is too small. Otherwise, concentration cannot be measured correctly. To ensure that the calibration curve is accurate, we can compare the values we obtain from our measurements with certified reference materials. If you cannot obtain a value within the range of the certified value, the system should be recalibrated. To ensure measurement accuracy, it is recommended to use certified reference materials, 
which can be readily obtained from the NIMD in Japan. Let us move on to sample weighing. We can check the balance's accuracy with calibration weights. Use a spatula or tweezers to carefully transfer a small quantity of hair to the combustion boat. Weigh the sample until we obtain a measurement of 5 to 10 milligrams, depending on the minimum weight of the balance. It is also essential to perform a duplicate analysis to ensure the precision of our results. Inclusion of the same sample every 10 samples is generally recommended. If the sample size is too small for multiple analyses, we can use reference materials instead. Regularly measuring reference material or standard solutions will help confirm that the instrument's sensitivity is stable. To ensure the results are consistent daily, it is recommended to analyze the same sample, ideally a CRM. CVAAS is widely used to determine total mercury levels in liquid samples. The method involves acid decomposition, reduction, and vaporization, followed by measurements by CVAAS. Both the US EPA and Japan have adopted this method to analyze mercury in wastewater. This technique requires only simple instrument maintenance, is recommended by the NIMD, and is included in the World Health Organization standard operating procedures for assessment of prenatal exposure to mercury. Technological advancements have recently led to the development of more sensitive and automated systems, such as cold vapor atomic fluorescence spectrometry. Modern instruments have detection limits in the range of picograms and can analyze many samples. The auto sampler adds tin chloride to the test solution, which generates elemental mercury vapor that is collected in the mercury collection tube. After complete reduction, the tube is heated to liberate the mercury as gas, and the fluorescence is then measured. Let us talk about the concentrations of mercury in urine. In general, people with low exposure have levels of about 0.3 micrograms per liter. However, people with high levels of exposure, from dental fillings or through eating fish, for example, can have up to five nanograms per milliliter. In gold mining areas, levels are often higher than 25 nanograms per milliliter. CVAFS can measure the range of levels that are commonly seen in both the general population and in cases of occupational exposure. When measuring sample concentrations accurately, it is essential to use a standard that has a concentration close to that of the sample. If needed, we can use a multipoint calibration curve method. However, usually a linear range with three points covering 3 to 100 nanograms per liter is sufficient. The next step is acid digestion. First, people prepare a sample digestion tube by adding a boiling stone, nitric acid, perchloric acid, and sulfuric acid. Then, carefully add a urine sample, stirring continuously. The sample tubes are heated for 30 minutes on a hot plate at 200 degrees Celsius to 230 degrees Celsius, then cooled and mixed with a known volume of mercury-free water. Repeat this process for the blank and standard test solutions. To ensure accuracy, it is good practice to verify our analyses regularly by analyzing a CRM sample, such as TDAAS. Remember to prepare a sufficient quantity of the pre-treated CRM solution in advance. Implementing the Minamata Convention on Mercury requires capacity building on appropriate mercury monitoring and health impact studies. We aim to contribute to the global mercury pollution problem by proficiency testing in collaboration with UNEP-ROAP.